Let's take a look at the scene hierarchy so we can understand how it works. Over here, we have this tab that says hierarchy, and this is where basically all of the objects that live in your scene are gonna be. And depending on where your camera is, when you hit play, you'll see some of these objects. In order to take a look at this, we want to first create a new um, sprite. So we'll go to 2D objects and we'll say sprite. And then we'll select an object, like here, and we're gonna call this planet, okay? Now it's kind of at a weird position. This does happen sometimes, so you sort of need to watch out. Especially with the Z position, if I look at it, it's negative 50. Well, I'm pretty sure my camera is not gonna see this. I see it right here, and this uh, lighter square here is my camera. And if I hit play, I'm gonna probably notice that nothing's there, as you can see. Another way that you can check this really easily is by selecting your camera, and you'll see a preview, and you'll notice that the planet's not there. Well, the reason it's not there is because the camera itself has its own settings, uh, if we look at it, we can see that it has um, a near and a far plane. And given its position and its direction, it's just not able to see my object because its position is negative 10 and it faces in the positive Z direction. And even though the far plane is at 1000 units away, my sprite was actually at negative 50. And so it's actually behind my camera. Now one little trick you can do is you can click on this 2D button. And when you do that, you can look around for the camera. Well, we can just double click on it and we'll see the direction that my camera is facing is actually the wrong direction. And in fact, there's my planet way behind it. Okay. But anyways, this is easily fixed. We're just going to set this at zero. This will now put this back into the correct location. And if I click on my camera, we'll see that we can see my planet. I think my planet's a little bit big, and first of all, it has a lame name, so I'm gonna rename it planet. And I'm going to, I'm just gonna set its position to be right in the center. And then I'm gonna change its scaling to maybe 25% of what it was. So when I see this, you know, I just basically wanna be able to see the planet at a reasonable size so we can demonstrate what's happening. Now, as you read in the material about math, uh, the 2D math for games, um, what you learned was that each one of these has this transformation matrix that lives behind it, and that transformation represents a position, a rotation, and a scaling. And when we take another object and attach it to this, we make it the child object, and then those matrices are multiplied together to determine where that object is going to actually be located. So what I want to do is I'm just going to have this planet selected, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new sprite. And this time, uh, let me just call this moon. And I'm gonna select my sprite and I'm gonna use the green one so it's sort of distinguished a little bit. And uh, it's the same size, so I'm also gonna make this even smaller, like maybe 0.1, so 10% of the size. I'm not changing the Z because it's a flat object, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to move this planet over to say 50 units to the right. Eh, maybe that's a bit big, so maybe 25 units to the right. Now what I can already see is that if I do that, this uh, camera here that's sort of showing is showing that my moon's outside of that. So I'm still too far. Let's get a little bit closer, um, say 15 units. There we go. That way when it rotates, we'll see it. So this moon now is attached to the planet and wherever I move the planet, the moon is gonna move also. And you can just see that immediately when I start scrolling this. And let me scroll in a little bit here so that's quite a bit more obvious. But when I move my child, my parent object, my child object is gonna move with it, all right? And the same thing happens when I do rotation. If I rotate this parent object, uh, which we have to rotate around the Z position, we'll see that the child object automatically rotates with it. From the child's perspective, you know, if you remember the, the readings on the 2D math, you know, the child's perspective is that it's connected to the planet and so it's not actually moving. It is still 15 units in the X direction from the planet. It's just that the, the whole axis has rotated in two dimensional space. Now let's create a script that will allow this object to rotate and I'm going to attach it to the moon here. And I'm gonna say, 
add component and I will call this, this is a new script. I'm going to say, I'm going to call it uh, rotate moon. And we'll create and add this. This will take a second to get loaded up. There we have it. I'll double click on it. And now we have this mono behavior that is called rotate moon. The first thing I want to do is I always want to have a speed for how fast my object is rotating. Um, and I want to expose it to the, uh, to the Unity game engine. So I'm going to make it a public. And it's just going to be a floating point value that's going to represent how many angles, how many, how many degrees per second or radians per second that this object is rotating. So I'm going to say public float speed. Next in the update, what I want to do is I want to find out what my parents' position is because maybe my parents' position is changing. And the position is represented by a vector three, and we'll just call this parent position. And now to get it, what I want to do is I want to use my transform object. My transform object uh, maintains the relationship. It's a component. It maintains the relationship between the other objects in the scene hierarchy. So if I say transform.parent, for example, what that will give me is whatever object this is attached to, so in other words, where this is uh, sitting under, it's going to return that object for me. And then I'm going to say, um, I'm going to get its transform, and then I'm going to get its position. So that gets me the parent position. We'll leave a little comment here. And then I want to do a rotation around the parent's position. So the parent's position is actually at the center. You can tell when I rotated it that it was the center because it rotated right around the middle of it. So we're going to use a function called transform rotate around because this is going to give us some options on how we rotate it. And the first thing that we want to give it is the parent position because we want to rotate around the parent position. And then we need to give it an axis. And if we just, if we just look at this version of rotate around we'll see that it only takes an axis and an angle but what we really want is this one which takes a point an axis and as an angle if you use this one instead you're going to use the parent's position as a an axis to rot rotate around and you'll rotate around your center so it's not quite what you want and it's depending on where its position is this is definitely not going to be what you want because it, the position might be some weird x and y so you're going to get some weird uh, vector that you're rotating around. So we want to use this uh, second um, function here. And so the axis is actually going to be vector three. So the vector three object has several um, properties that are static, meaning that they're like predefined and you can already use them just by calling the class name. They're sort of like global variables attached to an object. So vector three forward. It turns out the vector three forward is the vector zero, zero, one. So one is basically pointing in the positive Z axis, which is what we want. So we're gonna use that vector. And then finally, we're gonna use speed. And of course, we're gonna multiply this by time delta time in order to make sure that the rotation is frame independent. It doesn't matter what the frame rate is, how many times this is called, we'll know how much time has elapsed and modify our speed by that. Now this should be enough to get us to rotate. So let's go back to our game and we'll see now that we have a speed and let's make the initial speed 10 before we start and then we can hit play. And there we go, we have a rotating moon. Of course we can move this while we're in game. So if you get a negative speed, we'll go backwards. And if you get a positive speed, you'll go forward. And the bigger it is, the faster it goes. Now, obviously, I could take another one of these and attach it to it, and then whatever it's attached to will um, rotate around that object. So it would be easy to have moons around moons around moons. And that's it for the scene hierarchy.